Microbrands have changed the world of watch enthusiasm forever. Offering previously inaccessible levels of finishing and intriguing designs at competitive prices compared to the major watch brands on the market. And in this video, we'll compare and contrast three of, I would say, some of the leaders when it comes to micros out there on the market, looking at three different GMTs. Baltic with their Aquascaf GMT, Ferrer with their Lander 4, and the Manta Atlas. These three watches, I think, represent some of the best value when you're talking about GMT watches from micro brands, but maybe just in brands in general. Let's jump in. So before we jump in looking at these three watches, if you love all things micro brands, I'd recommend checking out our buying guide and blog, overviewing basically all the micro brands or a lot of micro brands in the industry that you should be aware of, have almost 50 on that list and we always add to it uh, as time goes on. So certainly would recommend checking that out if you wanna have a nice jumping off point to see other great brands that maybe you have not heard of before. I'll have that link in the description down below. And if you wanna stay up to date with other great content just like this, definitely sign up to our weekly newsletter where we send written content to your inbox every single week. So with this discussion around micro brands, generally speaking, I would define a micro brand as an independent brand that does not, in most cases, possess its own expansive in-house watchmaking or manufacturing capabilities and have low production numbers compared to, say, some of the major brands in the market when we're talking about a yearly basis. In the last 10 years or so, this segment of brands have risen to unprecedented heights in popularity among enthusiasts with some of the best options, including the brands that we're gonna be taking a look at here today, now acting closer to that of smaller independents. Now these watches all share a GMT complication, and while all the calibers utilized here are interestingly all different, they each fall under the category of office or collar GMT watches as opposed to true GMT watches. I have detailed the discussion around the difference between these two ideas in videos in the past, one being the comparing of different GMTs at different price points. Uh, but in short, with an office GMT, moving the crown in the second position allows an isolated function of only the 24 hour home time hand, not your local hour hand. As in this case, this is what we call a true GMT or a traveler's GMT, which also tends to be a lot more expensive given the higher level of complexity in the caliber itself and is valued more with its ability to set the time of a changing time zone without stopping the balance or having to move any of the other hands. So with that out of the way, let's dig into more of the overview portion of this video, starting with the least expensive option of our three here at $1,200 on a bracelet, we have the Baltic Aquascaf GMT. Baltic, based in Paris, France, has risen to prominence since their 2017 debut, largely as a result of their Miyota-powered 50 Fathoms-esque Aquascaf Divers Watch. This GMT variant adds a Swiss caliber from a lesser known provider in Soprod, while also tastefully updating the overall look to integrate the GMT functionality. Starting with the case and wearing experience of the Aquascaf, this 39 by 47 millimeter case is true to size for me and wears like the classic mid 20th century sports pieces from Rolex, therefore represents a size I think many will enjoy for a watch of this style. It includes a sign screw down crown and case back, aiding in the 100 meters of water resistance, while also including a bi-directional 24-click bezel with a straightforward brush finish that complements the reflection stemming from the colorful sapphire 24-hour bezel insert. We have a dome sapphire crystal, which is going to extend that thickness to 13.3 millimeters. Set between 20 millimeter drilled lugs, the Aquascaf leans into Baltics, excellent for the price beads of rice bracelet that despite having pin adjusted links and a stamp clasp, is comfortable and looks the part with the rest of the watch. Moving into the dial, we have a glossy black surface with printed markers reminiscent of the original Aquascaf. It features polished and loomed stainless steel hands paired with a subtle blue GMT hand. Dial text is minimal with Aquascaf printed in the same shade of blue as that GMT hand at the six and the brand's text at the 12. Keeping everything symmetrical, the date window has been shifted to the six o'clock position, a location that keeps everything looking really clean and is also coming in a matching black date disc to not obstruct the dial. The dial, the hands, and the bezel of this Aquascaf GMT all feature C1 Super 
Luminova, offering a reasonably bright, consistent glow across the loomed areas. It does fade a bit quicker than the other watches we're going to be looking at, but it is an ample supply, and I would say is the strongest of the three in the loom department. Turning the watch over, we have a case back featuring a detailed engraving indicating the world's time zones, which is theoretically useful for setting the GMT hand. However, one point of note is that there was a typo with some of the displayed times on here, which Baltic has since corrected on future watches as this was one of the earlier display models. Now digging into the movement lying underneath, we have the Soprod C125. Soprod is a movement manufacturer owned by Swiss group Festina that I have been seeing rolled out in many other micro brands as well as brands like Zodiac, for example. And while the reputation of these are not as established compared to some of the competition, it's similar in construction to something like the Eta 2893 or the SW330 housed in the other two watches. In terms of its general specifications, the C125 offers a 42 hour power reserve, ticking away at 28,800 vibrations per hour, 4 hertz, along with hand winding and hacking seconds functionality. In terms of its accuracy, we tested all of these examples at five different positions. This one here was running at plus three to plus eight seconds a day when testing across those five different positions. Leaving France for a moment and traveling across the channel to the UK, we have the fourth edition of the Fairer Lander known as the Lander 4, a charming GMT watch from a younger brand and fairer that has since launching in 2015, already built an impressive reputation for design and quality as well as more colorful executions. The Lander 4 is a member of Ferrer's GMT collection with each individual reference offering a unique colorway and its own name, including the striking sea green sunray dial of the Lander 4, named for an 1800s British explorer. On the wrist, the Lander offers a restrained wearing experience compared to many modern watches with a 39 and millimeter case diameter paired with an impressively compact 45 millimeter lug to lug measurement, making this the smallest of the trio here today. The thickness is also under control at 10 millimeters, even considering the prominently dome box sapphire crystal meant to evoke the feel of vintage acrylic options. Case finishing is straightforward, offering polishing on the rounded case sides and brushing across the tops of the lugs. At three, Ferrer offers its signature bronze push-pull crown with an exhibition case back at the rear, with this example leaning into a 20 millimeter brown leather strap with quick release spring bars that doesn't blow you away by any means, but with this watch, it works and definitely complements the colorway. A notable Ferrer signature is the amount of attention paid to the dial, mostly in their eccentric yet tasteful uses of color. Transitioning between blue and green, depending on the lighting conditions, the Lander 4 dial is multi-dimensional with a recessed center portion and circular color match date window. Indices are loom stylized Arabics with secondary 24 hour markings printed just outside. Polished syringe style hands manage time telling with an orange sweep second and red GMT hand adding further color to this watch. Despite the mix of colors though, the opposite of the color wheel contrast of the red orange elements works in drawing separation from the green backdrop. One thing I will mention is that it can be a little bit difficult at a quick glance when it's actually sweeping that second hand, it's a bit easier, but the subtle difference in color from the pointed GMT hand with the second hand might throw some people with bad eyes off. This is a small point because if you see the sweep, it's pretty easy to tell, but still there is not much difference between the color there. White Superluminova is also present present on the dial, Arabic indices, and it is somewhat limited in supply compared to our other watches. Yet with its adequate nighttime legibility and 100 meters of water resistance, this watch does have some sporty upside. Turning the lander over, we have an exhibition case back affixed with four screws near the lugs, allowing for a clear view of a solid third-party caliber with the top grade Salita SW330. Like the other collar GMTs featured in this video, the SW330 is a modular execution based on the SW300 and similar to the relationship between the Eta 2892 and the 2893. What is different here is that this caliber features some moderate decoration, offering perlage across the base plate and central bridges, as well as a custom skeletonized ferrer rotor. The SW330 kept solid time between zero to plus five seconds per day when testing across five different positions. And in terms of just general specs here, the SW330 offers 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz with that beat rate, does feature hacking and hand winding. And this is a newer generation of this movement. So it does have an extended power reserve of 56 hours, which is really good for a third party option. 
Ascending to our highest price point, we have the Atlas from Manta, a St. Louis based brand that has quickly developed a reputation for some of the best finishing from a micro brand since launching back in 2016. Along with the diving Sea King and the time only Noble, the Atlas serves as Manta's GMT option paired with the more GMT master-esque SkyQuest. And still offering the same level of finishing enthusiasts have come to expect from this brand. In terms of sizing, the Atlas comes in with the smallest diameter here today, measuring in at 38.5 millimeters across, but does feature a 47 millimeter in the lug-to-lug -lug length. Visually, the watch does wear slightly larger than those metrics might suggest, an effect of the larger dial-to-bezel ratio and broader lug design. Though the svelte 10.2 millimeter thickness means this piece is still comfortable to wear. Getting back to finishing, Manta makes use of primarily brushed surfaces offset by numerous hits of polishing in key areas in a way that makes the watch come alive under changing lighting conditions while avoiding being ostentatious. The bevel casting along the case side, the inside of the 20 millimeter lugs, and the brushed bezel top are all done exceptionally. This finish extends to that bracelet that is of the oyster style. It tapers down to an impressive 18 millimeter milled clasp, which is also well finished and equipped with a slick micro adjustment extension system. However, this does come at the cost of a longer clasp than normal. The links are screwed into place and have some of the best articulation of any bracelet, and I'm talking really any bracelet for the price, offering breathability and a seamless drape over the wrist. Gazing through the only flat sapphire crystal on our list here, the Atlas dial offers another chance for Manta's finish to shine. With a three-dimensional approach that includes faceted polished loom-filled rectangular and trapezoidal indices over a primary dark blue lacquered surface paired with a loom sword handset with the unique GMT execution. Although not apparent from afar, under closer examination, the GMT hand at its tip is bent in order to be able to have enough clearance to pass over the raised markers on the dial. I can't recall actually seeing this before. And the first time I saw this, I'm like, this is just really cool and just exercising creativity in a small and unique way. The red tip loomed arrow GMT hand works in tandem with the Rehot that is printed with only odd numbers in the 24 hour scale. A date window is symmetrically placed at six, Dial text is also prominently displayed with a large Monta signature printed in white at noon with Atlas in red and 150 meters of water resistance advertised in white at six. Turning the Atlas over, we are treated with what is perhaps the most common color GMT caliber on the market with the ETA 2893, here viewed through another exhibition case back. In terms of its general construction and concept, the 2893 is another modular GMT caliber, offering the general specs of something like the elevated 2892A2, modified in much of the same way as the SW330 to accept the additional time zone functionality. Similar to the Ferrer, we have some up finish, mostly on the rotor that features a Cote de Genève finish. But apart from that, it's pretty conventional with only mild graining on some other movement elements. In terms of general specifications for the ETA 2893, we have a beat rate of 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz. It does feature hacking and hand winding and has a power reserve of 42 hours. And as far as accuracy goes for this ETA 2893 that was tested within this Manta, just to give some anecdotal evidence, minus four to zero seconds per day when testing across five different positions. So now that we've looked at all of these watches in a bit more detail, let's talk specifically about kind of some pros and cons, things to consider and which one is right for which type of individual and which one you should potentially go for. Now let's start with the Baltic, our most inexpensive option here. If I had to pinpoint the safest design of all of these three, this would certainly be the one, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, with the bicolor bezel along the outside, there's certainly some Rolex in this design, at least embedded within, but you probably could say that for the Manta as well with the bracelet, but certainly it is going to be the most felt here. This concept of a GMT in this type of configuration is familiar, but that also could be a huge plus because, hey, this is gonna have a lot of reach uh, from the design perspective for many people out there on the market. Case is very wearable. It's probably gonna be the most vintage inspired of all of the three watches here. And with it being the least expensive option, perhaps provides the most bang for buck. A couple things to consider though, which is going to allow this watch to reach that price is that's not gonna be Swiss made like the other watches on this list. So if that's something that you really value, uh, that's a point of consideration. And it's also gonna probably have the least proven movement so proud from my whole perspective, I've never had any issues uh, with their movements. I actually own a, a watch with their movements in my own collection. So I can speak to it as an actual owner of these movements, but 
compared to Etta and Salida, not as big of a name, so that certainly is another thing to maybe keep in mind uh, when you're looking in the direction of this piece. Now moving up to the fairer, and not so much in price, we're talking about a few hundred dollars. I think you're getting a nice reasonable jump up in some of the case finish. It is a bit simple, it's a little rounded off, but I see it mostly with the dial and the finishing on the actual front of the watch where I can feel a little bit of my money being um, just noticeable in that execution. Now the colorful dial and hands here is not gonna be for everybody. This is probably going to be the most polarizing of all the designs, but is also the most unique, I would say. Now, one could perhaps argue that being unique is not always good if it doesn't lead to a nice, tasteful end result, but I think you're getting that here. It's also the smallest of the trio by a good margin. With the thin bezel, it could make the dial appear relatively larger compared to maybe some other watches of the same uh, case diameter, but still of the three is going to be the smallest. Loom is definitely the weakest on this watch. I'd give the Baltic number one, the Manta uh, behind, and then third would certainly be this watch. Not unusable, but is not going to be a leading factor in why you would look at this piece. This watch is Swiss made, so a good portion of the parts and assembly is going to take place in Switzerland, so that's nice to see. But I think the big thing here for this watch is the top grade SW330 on the inside. It's gonna have that extended power reserve, so this is probably a second generation of this movement. At 56 hours, that's quite good for a third-party movement. Considering this is also a top grade, you're going to get some nice performance out of this. This is basically the grade that's gonna be used for many watches that are sending these uh, movements in for chronometers. This one is not chronometer certified, but even with that being the case, you get that up finish and some nice performance as we saw with this example when testing at a variety of different positions. Probably the dressiest type of architecture for this watch with the rounded off case sides and what it's going for, but the colors kind of put all that to rest. So this is not gonna be the watch for maybe everyone, but it's positioned a nice area of value, not being much more than the Baltic, and I would say is the most unique in its execution and not as familiar or something like the Baltic or the Manta uh, in the final end product. And then when it comes to the Manta Atlas, this is by far the best finish watch of the three. I think it's noticeable in the bracelet, the case, even on the hands and the dial itself. This one is a step above when it comes to finishing, no question about it. Movement is right there with the fairer, but probably not gonna to be to the same degree. The finishing is certainly better on the fairer. And from the looks of it, this is not a top grade at a caliber on the inside. Bracelet, again, by far the best of the trio. That micro adjustment system on the fly, fantastic to see. The clasp is going to be longer, so if you do have a smaller wrist, it might sit a bit strange or maybe not as perfect as you might want, but that comes with the upside of that micro adjustment, so it's just a give and take there. Loom is not the greatest. I would say this is number two of the trio. It does the job, but not quite on the tier of the Baltic. I wouldn't say any of them are exceptional in the Loom department, but even with this watch looking the part, it is by far the best finished of these three pieces, you are paying for it. It's gonna be more expensive. The prices on these uh, have gone up as well in the last couple of years. I think it's still a great product for the money, but you're talking about perhaps $500 more than the fair, depending on where you're at in the world. And that's another watch in a way. You could probably get another great micro brand uh, in your back pocket if you wanted to just get another watch for that same difference of price. So that's gonna be probably the biggest factor when looking at the Monta, but no question a well-finished product for the money. But all right, guys, that is my take looking at these three GMT watches uh, from different micro brands. I think these three brands have ascended to kind of that upper echelon of micros and just what they're delivering for a final end product. They have great reputations. I think they're leaders, and I think a lot of other just uh, upstart brands can learn a thing or two for how these brands operate. And I think these are some of the better value even outside of this small little world of micros. I think these stack up even well against some of the big brands uh, in the price category and even beat them in many areas. But I'd love to see comments down below. What do you guys think of these three watches? Which one would you go for? Leave a comment. And also, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. I don't just say that. I really would appreciate that as well. Definitely check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and also offer a full factory warranty for all of our new products and have a great selection of pre-owned models as well where you can buy as well as sell your watch. So definitely check that out in addition to shopping all of our new watches. Check out the micro brand blog below if you want 
more things micro brands and follow along on Instagram to stay up to date with the content and see some great photos of watches. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.